So I'm going to talk about a uh, graded field, graded product using uh, Diva. Maybe some of you know it, but I like the phrase when you say collect once, you all know it, use it many times, and maybe you miss the third one and create products with Diva. That's something I would like to. So in Monday Secretaria, please add this third part for us. Sometimes also I like to finish, to start my presentation with the conclusion, because I'm not sure I will do it in time. So the conclusion are Diva is a software tool written in Fortran, uh, Diva and this, another software tool written in Julia, and both of them, we designed them to, to do special interpolation of data. So I think now I have 14 minutes to explain that, but you, you know the message, and it's, it's really about, about that. Uh, how it works. So methodology, we will talk about spatial interpolation. It's quite fun because I think it's the same problem for all of us when we have to explain what you're doing to your parents, to your dentist, to anybody. It's like, oh, it's difficult. So I have to explain that I'm doing spatial interpolation. So it's oof. And uh, usually they don't understand. So you, my grandmother, for example, say, what do you do? Climate change? You say, yes, yes, yes. yes. And she, she, it's better because you have to explain that. So maybe for you it's the same. So. Let's try to explain a little bit better. So we have a nice map here of the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, with all the database we have, I could find the temperature in two places. Uh, Barcelona, the seawater temperature is about 18.4 degrees, which is, which is fine. And there is a platform in France. It says uh, 19.8 degrees. Okay. So the question is, what is the temperature in the black dot? So you say it's more or less the same distance between the two, so you can say, well, it's uh, midway between the two temperatures, which is probably a good estimate. So this is a typical problem with interpolation. We want to get the value somewhere using the information in different place. But we know with uh, Data Cloud, all the project, uh, all the infrastructure, we have a lot of uh, data. This is a heat map of all the, the data we, we have. So I will zoom out first to show you something. If you zoom out, you think, oh, it's full. We have data everywhere, so we don't have to work anymore. But no. If you zoom in, you know, of course, that we have a lot of data. We have billion, uh, not billion, millions of data points, but not everywhere. So we have areas with a lot of data, a lot of measurement, like this area with uh, these cruises you have along the French uh, coast, you have a lot of but other places, the data are sparse. So it's something that we have to take account when we uh, do design uh, a method to, to interpolate uh, the data. So let's talk a little bit about the constraint that we had when you had to design the software tool. So we want, want that if we have some observation, the distance uh, between them influence the, 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 the interpolation process. So if you are closer to the data, uh, this data will influence more. You have different confidence to the measurement. Some device work works better, maybe. Sometimes they have more error, more uncertainty. So we have to take that into account. Also, we don't work in an open space. We work in the ocean. So there are currents, there are boundaries, there are islands, all that. You have to take them into account if you want to do proper information and not propagate, for example, the information across the country, across the land. We have to deal uh, with millions of, of points. So we cannot have a method that takes one week to one month to, to give a result with a few seconds. We have many sources of errors on the data and we also uh, need, it's very important, an estimate of the error that we have when we, when we create uh, the interpolation. So DIVA basically is uh, it's a mathematical method to properly interpolate data. And it's, it's, uh, when I say mathematics, it's a lot of mathematics. So I don't want to, to show that here because first, I don't have time. And second, it's uh, hard to put all the equation in this presentation. I don't want. So let's start with something very easy. You imagine the black dots. It's a time series. You have black dots. It's observation. You want to interpolate them. So if you do a pure linear interpolation, it's a straight line between all the points. If you do that on the ocean data, it's not good because we just said before, we have errors, you have uncertainties on the data. So what you want to do is to create something which is smooth, which is the gray line, but it's uh, smooth at the same time close to the data. So that's basically what is inside Diva, being close to the data, but providing something smooth. So you can imagine between the observation and between the interpolation, it's like a spring, uh, like pulling the, the, the field toward the data. So you have Diva. Diva data interpolating variation analysis available on GitHub. You have a yeah, very nice logo. And you can go back to the map to see how it works because, of course, it works. So we have all this data. So I will remove the map to make it clearer. First, we need to delimit our domain. We start to, with uh, bathymetry. 
And of course, we use emotnet bathymetry. So we have the emotnet bathymetry here, and we use it. Sorry, because the mouse is not doing what I expect, but yeah, we have the bathymetry. From that, we use it to generate the control. So the control is the black line. It delimit delimitates the area where we perform the, the, the interpolation. So it means outside this, there won't be interpolation. Then we create what we call finite element mesh. So it's a lot of small triangles and each of the triangle we <laughs> compute the solution of the, of the interpolation. And then we ensure that between all the small triangles there is a consistency. So the, the solution is uh, continuous across all the triangles. Uh, the finite element techniques is very famous in engineering to build planes, etc., and use it, in fact, in oceanography. I think it's quite a nice feature. And what is good is that we don't, we don't depend on the number of data points. We depend, the competition cost depends on the number of triangles, which is uh, quite nice. And in the end, we get the interpolated field, which is, in this case, can be temperature or salinity, whatever. But that's really the message. We have lots of million of data points and we can get graded field. This is uh, the classical diva that we have here. The problem is that usually you don't want just one level, you want many levels, uh, you want different times of the year, different periods, so it means you have to repeat that again and again. But it's not a problem because we said it took a few seconds to do an analysis, so if you do it 1,000 times, it's uh, maybe a few hours of computation, it's still okay. But at some point we decided we need to innovate because you cannot always rely on the same stuff. And my colleague Alexander designed uh, another method which is called, uh, it's very original, it's DIVA ND, N dimensional gener generalization of DIVA. So it's much more complex, again, the point of view of mathematics, but the method itself is the same. It's a balance between uh, observation and at the end that you want to obtain something which is smooth. Now it doesn't work only on two dimensions, it works. Uh, Longitude, latitude, depth, time, and any dimension you can invent to interpolate your data. So you have the web, the, the GitHub, uh, the DOI for the code, and uh, a recent paper, no, recent, no, 2014 was the first version of the code uh, developed by, by Alexander. It's a geoscientific model development. At the beginning, it was written in MATLAB. MATLAB is not so nice for us because it was slow, it was very slow, and slow, we, we cannot be slow in this case, so we, we well, I'll explain this later, we, we switched to Julia, I don't know, in, if you, in the room, you can raise your hand if you know Julia, uh, okay, maybe, maybe 10%, uh, probably most of them, it's because we have explained, so okay, so Julia is a language which is very recent, 2012, so you imagine yeah, six years, and they only released the 1.0 version uh, two or three months ago, so yeah. So Julia, they say, okay, we want the simplicity of Python, which is, which is totally true, and the speed of C and Fortran, and it's the same, it's true. So it's very what we needed, and it's, it's fun because nobody's using it, and I think it's getting bigger, stronger, and uh, something people will use in the future. So how do we use Julia? In fact, we use the Jupyter Notebooks. So I think the next presentation is about Jupyter Notebooks, so I don't have to take time to explain that, but we combine code fragment, explanation graphics inside uh, an environment that people can execute as a guideline to create the climatology. So that's how we work. But I wanted to ask you, do you know who is Julia? Because I some some question I asked myself yesterday. I don't know who is Julia and check. In fact, there is Julia, Julia Child. She was a chef, but it's true. She was a television. Pro she had a television program in the U.S. I don't know if some of you in the, from the U.S. have seen her. And she, her objective was to bring the French cuisine to to the U.S. audience. Uh, so it's uh, it's very interesting. So the analogy with Julia is that the the, the creator they said we want to bring a good uh, good program good, good programming language to the to the programmer. So th that's what they did. So we talk about. Cuisine, we'll talk about music now. Daft Punk, uh, get harder, better, faster, stronger. Why? Because it's purely what we get with Diva, uh, with uh, Julia. Better uh, with multi-dispatch, math-friendly math syntax. For us, it's very, very important because it's mathematics what we are doing with uh, with uh, Diva. Uh, faster, it's very, very fast, and it's e very easy to parallelize the code, so we can. Uh, can take uh, use all, all the cluster we have in Europe to, to do that. It's stronger. We have meta programming, so generating Julia code with Julia code. We can uh, 
interface with R. A lot of you, I think, are using R with Python. So I put easy because it's easy, but not yet totally uh, feasible, but uh, most of them, yes. And also harder. It was harder to learn uh, Julia because it's an evolving language. And when they switch uh, from version 0 0.6 to 1.0, everything broke. But totally, I mean, everything, all the script we had, we had to rewrite everything. But we knew about that. Now it's over. But we had like a few weeks of work on that. So that's why uh, the harder is there. So Diva and the VRE. The VRE is the virtual research environment. What we noticed that with Diva, the problem is not to use it, it's to install it. Most of the problem come here. And if, if we have time to, if you don't want to spend time to install it, we can use the VRE. So what we want to do as a usual workflow, the user login, you say, okay, I will use the WebODV to get my data, uh, to do quality control, the picket check, so it gets a net CDF. The net CDF is ingested by Diva, you set the parameters, you do the analysis, you get a new net CDF that can visualize. So pretty easy. So okay. Always API, API, API. So I have to talk about an API. Uh, they ask us in the VRE to have a application, uh, an API to facilitate the use of Diva. So it's done again in Julia and deployed as a Docker container. And we have two minutes, okay. And uh, this is uh, the virtual, um, the graphical interface of Diva. So you of the of the API. So you can select the parameters, run Diva, and and that's all. Uh, Application, we have uh, the C data cloud climatologies, the Imonet chemistry graded field, and recently we have developed a product for Imonet biology. So we're very happy, uh, happy to work with different kind of data. A few words about innovation. So we try always to reinvent ourselves, not to reinvent the wheel, but reinvent the way we, we deal with, uh, with Diva. We had a tool to work on the HF radar, which is a, now a very popular platform. So we improved the, the way we interpolate the data uh, with the HF radar, the velocity field. So I don't go into details. The main message here is that you can introduce some physics inside the interpolation <laughs> process to get something more realistic. And uh, more recently, we had a neural network because now it's almost uh, yeah, it's very fancy to talk about that. So you see, when you're front bracing, it's AI. When you Hiring XML and when you're implementing it, it's linear regression. So it's like, yeah, it's not really true. We did something serious with that. Uh, we use it to uh, to interpolate zooplankton count in the Baltic Sea. So the principle is very easy. We don't only use the, this variable, we use salinity, temperature, chlorophyll, bathymetry as a core variable. And with the neural network, we try to derive the relationship between the main variable and this core variable. And I can show you some results, uh, very fresh result. Maybe a few days ago, we produced that. So, Curetella uh, cruciformis uh, concentration or counts uh, in the Baltic Sea. So, I think uh, I should be over now. So, conclusion, you know there. So, it's okay. I just have to add the fourth one. We're open and willing to improve and adapt the code for different data types. So, we can talk after. If you have some data you want to try, we're really open. And uh, thanks. Thanks for your attention.